and a warm welcome to all of you HPIE 3.0. And now we are starting here and moving with our panel discussion which is on the topic of health insurance that is enabling fair level playing field in healthcare insurance ecosystem. So for that I would like to call Mr. Suman Mukhari. Mr. Suman Mukhari sir. He is a CEO of STS Wealth. Please come up on the stage. He is the moderator of this panel discussion over here. Please give him a huge round of applause. Mr. Suman Mukhari sir. So uh, please come up here. And uh, now I would like to hand over the mic. It's a humble request to invite all the esteemed panelists for the panel discussion. Thank you so very much. Thank you everyone. Good afternoon everyone. And welcome to the insightful panel discussion on the Dynamic Intersection of AI and Health Insurance. I am Suma Mukhari, your moderator for today's session, and it's my privilege to guide us through what promises to be a thought-provoking exploration of one of the most prominent topics in today's healthcare landscape. We are joined by an esteemed panel of experts, each bringing a unique perspective shaped by their remarkable experience in healthcare, insurance, and technology. Our discussion today aims not only to drive into the challenges and opportunities presented by AI in health insurance, but also to eliminate the path forward in this rapidly evolving field. So, without any further ado, let's embark on this journey of discovery and dialogue starting with our first panelist. I request our first panelist, Dr. Sabina Kapasi, to please come on to the dais, ma'am. Please welcome Dr. Sabina Kapasi, an expert United Nations Emergency Response Advisor and a vanguard in the field, fields of insurtech, fintech and healthcare tech. Dr. Kapasi's work spanning across continents brings a wealth of global perspective to our discussion. Her passion for integrated technology into healthcare solutions has made substantial inroads into how we approach into global health crisis. Thank you, ma'am. And I would like to now request Dr. Abhitab Gupta to please come on to the dais. Uh, we are honored to have Dr. Abhitab Gupta with us the Chief Business Executive at Ace Insurance Brokers Private Limited, a luminary in the insurance broking space. Dr. Gupta's innovative strategies and leadership have been pivotal in navigating the complexities of risk management. His expertise is instrumental in shaping the insurance industry to adapt in this evolving demands of the digital age. And he is also the board, uh, on the board of HIMSS. And now I would like to invite uh, Dr. Uh, sorry, uh, Param, Parambir Singh Gill. Yes, sir. And Dr. Paramveer Singh Gill has been in the Indian Navy for 19 years and he has been the chief shipwright artifact worked at leadership and management levels in warships, joined ICIC Lombard in 2014 and led various teams of Pan-India level and in May 2023 joined Prudent Insurance Brokers and heading Marine Loss Control and Engineering Team to control the recurring losses. And now I request uh, yeah. Now I request uh, Mahfuz Ali Khan to please come on to the dais. Let us extend our uh, warm welcome to Mr. Mahfuz Ali Khan, the insightful head of operations at PB Partners Policy Bazaar. Within a key eye for operational efficiency and a deep understanding of consumer needs, Mr. Khan has played a crucial role in optimizing the health insurance purchasing process. His strategic initiatives have significantly contributed to streamlining operations and elevating customer satisfaction. Thank you so much. Thank you all for being here. And I request Dr. So, uh, Colonel Parmar to please come onto the dais. He is the co-founder of, of Ayushpay and uh, thank you for your last minute request to uh, getting onto the panel, sir. Yeah, so as you all know, this is the topic on how artificial intelligence will play a role in the health insurance space. So we have doctors and we have insurance brokers and from the healthcare, uh, from the insurance sector. So this is a good panel where we'll have a good discussion on that. So starting with, maybe I'll, I'll start with uh, Dr. Sabina, ma'am. Uh, so from a global healthcare perspective, 
what are some of the most successful applications of AI you have seen in health insurance markets around the world? So, um, thank you first of all for having me here. And um, AI is definitely not a new phenomenon, as we all know. Uh, it's more about processing data at a large scale and predictive outcomes uh, in a structured fashion, but doing it in a more auto automated and autonomous fashion. Now, if we are looking at uh, insurance spaces, one of the biggest pain points that has been solved uh, very effectively with AI solutions across the board has been solutions which are very specific to uh, risk analytics. So one of the things that any insurance system has to do is underwriting. And for that, they actually have to uh, gather data from multiple sources and make sure that there is a hard underwriting structure built out to it as well. So um, AI systems, for example, the Denmark AI system has proved very, very effective in being uh, able to have some of the lowest cost managed care programs because they have multiple uh, structured reinsurances as well as I'm sure you guys might agree that uh, they have AI systems that have worked phenomenally when in risk assessment as well as underwriting across the board. So I think uh, one of the biggest applications that AI has successfully been able to deliver is in risk assessment for insurance applications. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sabina ji. So, yeah, I think we have... We have our other panelists also here. Uh, let us welcome Mr. Nimitta Garwal. Joining us today, Mr. Nimit Agarwal, CEO and co-founder of Oishpe. As a dynamic entrepreneur, Mr. Agarwal has been instrumental in leveraging technology to enhance the financial and insurance landscapes. Is there? Okay. Maybe before, by, by the time he joins, let us continue with this. So I would ask uh, Abhitabh Ji, uh, so question for you is, as someone in the insurance broking field, what are the main challenges we are facing today? And how do you think AI can address them? in this current health insurance market. Okay. Let us understand what AI can do. AI, basically the value proposition of AI is to process vast amount of data, act on that data through computing abilities, and to create problem solving algorithms. Now coming to the main thing here, that is the data. Now in India, Digitalization is a huge issue. Is digitalization in healthcare enough? The answer is clearly no. Now what is happening today is that, uh, that the hospitals who treat patients provide the insurers or TPAs with hard copies of the data while they have it in soft copies. And then the data comes back to the insurers, and they key in only very relevant transactional data back into the system. Can you imagine? It's repetition of processes. So what is clearly not there is basically uh, the interoperability, the transactional data is uh, uh, in the soft copy is missing. And healthcare industry and the health insurance industry, the backend processes go hand in hand. And what is required is, you know, these providers and the insurers, the data migration has to happen through APIs or through web interfaces, which is currently not there. The second problem in India is that the health insurance products are not comprehensive in nature. So what they don't cover is most of the healthcare expenditure in India, which is the OPD segment. They cover less than 40% of the entire healthcare expenditure under health insurance sector, and we don't have comprehensive care products. Now what happens that the data which could have got generated through the OPD segment cannot be correlated 
to the sickness. So what happens is the morbidity data is not really well connected from the continuum of care perspective to the sickness data. So AI in India is still in its very nascent stages. However, there are many case, uh, use cases of AI and I'm, I'm sure uh, this will only go on increasing. For example, we have, we use chatbots, some amount of the AI while doing sales, which my colleagues uh, may talk later. Then you have something after sales, which is the servicing part. There you use uh, 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 these chatbots again. Then in underwriting, as my colleague was mentioning, yes, underwriting is a huge uh, case. I will not repeat what she has said, but then today what happens is that while doing an underwriting for a retail process, insurers ask for pre-policy health checkups. Now, currently there are models available where uh, through these applications where you can do facial uh, scans or fingerprinting scans, which can actually help you give uh, the healthcare data of that, pers uh, of that person, including uh, HbA1c and uh, many other risk factors, which can actually speed up the whole process and uh, give the consumer a seamless uh, uh, journey. So this is one of the uh, uh, things besides underwriting, uh, there are fields like uh, training. So AI can be used in training because in health insurance, uh, the biggest key to success is the agency force. So that is where it is utilized. Then AI can be utilized in cybersecurity uh, in the health, for the health insurance companies. Then another thing is fraud, which is I think uh, AI can play a major role here why? Because uh, today the, uh, the systems are being designed where when a, uh, as and when a claim comes, the uh, system will throw to the claim processor past claim uh, from those hospitals, which can give actually trending as to uh, you know, what kind of claims are being generated through that hospitals, past claim of the same claimant, right? It can give you... Uh, basically uh, 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 what should be a claim like in a secondary care or a tertiary care from that similar kind of hospitals and similar kind of doctors so that he knows while what he is processing. Also, uh, uh, there are a lot of parameters as to if a person goes quite far away from his hospitals and take a treatment, that could be a trigger for a fraud. So there are many things like that where AI can actually be uh, fully utilized. Thank you. Thank you, Abhidhar. So, Dr. Parmaji, like he mentioned about 40% is OPD and uh, like AI can play a role. I think you people are doing a lot of work on that OPD things and all. Maybe you'd like to add something there? So, just to add on uh, what was brought out, uh, you know, there are certain geographical areas uh, which are deemed as blacklisted by the insurance companies because a lot of fraudulent cases get generated from there. So even we as a firm, Ayush Pay, when, when we are partnering with the hospital, we have access to this data. So hospitals in that particular district or part of a particular state, uh, we typically will not go for partnerships. Second issue, uh, you know, the major usage of the AI that I see uh, see, as far as the insurance companies are concerned, they would like to continuously increase the uh, cost of insurance to, uh, you know, somebody who takes the insurance. And, you know, insurance is all about actuaries. So the insurance companies have, uh, you know, clinical information with them. They are sitting on a treasure trove of clinical information about the pre-existing diseases, you know, patients who have diabetes, hypertension, COPD, uh, cancer, and many other diseases. So with that data, which is generated in a longitudinal manner, that longitudinal data, clinical data, which is obtained from a patient, various diagnostics, pathological reports, which are available to them, they can actually, through predictive analytics, predict uh, you know, the future ailments in a patient. 
that this patient is likely to suffer from hypertension or cardiac problems or, you know, maybe cancer, uh, depending on his genetics in future. You know, we were talking about genome patri yesterday. Uh, that having access to somebody's genom genomic profile, maybe you can predict, uh, you know, how your family has been there. We all are aware, you know, about Angelina Jolie. She removed, uh, you know, both her breasts because her mother was uh, predisposed uh, to cancer. So, I mean, those kind of in clinical information will be available with the insurance companies. They will be able to predict the clinical condition of a patient uh, two year, three year uh, down the line. So, the correct surgical or medical intervention can be taken at this stage. Maybe certain lifestyle changes, dietary, sleeping patterns, exercise, everything can be modified right now. And the insurance company will be able to come up with an optimal, uh, you know, price for extending, uh, you know, insurance cover to that patient or that particular family. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much. So I would ask uh, Parambir Singh ji. Uh, so how is A transforming claims processing, and what improvements can customers expect in the near future? Uh, thanks and uh, good evening to everyone. Uh, being a insurance professional. First, I would like to tell you your numbers, because insurance is totally a number game. The trends of insurance of health from 2019 to 20 has gone by 11%. And in 2021, it has gone by again 12%. Post-COVID, the numbers has doubled. It has gone, increased by 26%. That is 80,502 crores. It is a gross return premium by the insurance companies. Number two, the non-life, insurance of two types, one is life, one is non-life. Right? Health comes under non-life. The non-life numbers as on YTD October 23 has increased by 14.69% with compared to last year. And the total gross return premium is 1,67 crores, 643 crores. And if we talk about only of health, health number has increased by 22.31% YTD October. The current number is 62,042 crores. We have 29 health insurance companies, all has issued the policies this year, and all has a positive growth except two insurance companies. This means the insurance business is booming in the country. And the three main players, YTD October, are New India with a stake of 18.2%, Star Health with a stake of 12.04%, and Oriental with 7.89%. These are the numbers, right? If the numbers are growing, the gross return premium is growing day on day, we expect the claims will grow accordingly. It's not feasible humanly to do the claims file, review the claims file, give the approvals for the admissions and discharge on immediate basis. This can be achieved only with the help of AI. In insurance, the AI can play a critical role for customized policies. Policies can be tailor-made based on the experience of the individuals and their health histories. Automated claims process. By automation the claim process, giving approvals as soon as possible can again trigger the best customer experience. And the very important is fraud detection. It's very difficult to detect the frauds manually, but with the AI, we can get the flags raised for particular cases where the AI sees there is a chance of a fraud. With all these sort of things, I believe the AI can uh, give a better hand to the insurer channel partners, as well as to the insurer's life. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. So, uh, Mehfuz, uh, so for you, what are the operational challenges in adopting AI within the health insurance and how can they be overcome? So, um, uh, thank you so much. And um, I'll tell you the current scenario of AI in health insurance. As Amitabh sir clearly uh, said, the, what are the challenges we had right now? So, I'll tell you what is the current AI which the insurance companies are using it. They're using certain tools like RPA, OCR, 
and uh, uh, some chatbot or some bot kind of things. So if we divide the insurance journey right currently in three parts, one is a sourcing part, other is a servicing part and the third is claim part. The sourcing part, I think we are doing nothing. We have no tools available in the market which can say, okay, okay, I'll tell you the health of the customer which you are sourcing it. If you talk about renewal, yes, we have. Well, there are a couple of products in the market which gives you, if you download their application, they will give you 100% relevant discount. Yeah. But at the sourcing end, we don't have anything right now. And uh, I don't think because uh, me in a company, uh, like I am having 15 to 20 year experience in health insurance, I don't see any insurer using it as of now. But uh, I'll tell you how to do that also going forward. And uh, if we'll come on uh, the servicing part, yes, we are using it. We are uh, doing robotic processing. We are eroding, using OCRs to read out the proposal form and all the documents and making a proposal form and sending to the customer. We are sending a digital payment links to them and creating a policy. This will give you the accuracy in the policy and the tag will improve further by using it. I am just telling you the benefit, then I will tell you the challenges which we have. If we come, if we'll come on the claim side, claim side, I think few of the organization in India are using for the cashless facility because a lot of document, digital documents comes in a, because cashless, only in the reimbursement you got a physical document, in the cashless you are getting a digital document. So you just scan it with an OCR, take all the information, put it in your system and by RP you can say yes, okay, I will approve the cashless or not. So this is the current scenario. Now what is the challenge? Just for give you example on a sourcing side, you give me your vehicle number, I can tell you your driving habits, I can tell you the entire detail of your uh, vehicle, the, your private car. We, so that in an insurer, we can underwrite your product, we can assess our risk, we can give you a better rate or a better discount as you said sir. Also, we can, we can uh, identify the fraud, maximum fraud accordingly. So what will, what is the exact benefit which we are giving right now to the customer in terms of uh, to the customer is he is getting an accurate policy, he is getting uh, uh, better tax, better services and a good price. For the company, they are making uh, uh, cost effective, bringing efficiency in the project and very important the accuracy in the policies, which is the, uh, the huge reduction in uh, endorsements and other things just because of the data entry. Now we come on with challenges. Challenges are we don't have any, any centralized database. Yes, government is making an initiative. We, we, we are coming up with the AVA kind of health card with the entire uh, detail of that particular person will be there. And it's depend if this access will be given to the insurer company or not to underwrite the product, to give the discount, to like a lot, lot of things are available just like a vehicle, just like a private car, I can underwrite anything. Same way. So there is a bigger challenge because the challenge is like privacy. Are we uh, ready as an as an ecosystem? Just like Sir said, there's a lot of documents available of uh, medical labs. There, all digital is available in our system. How to bring this in our system is the task. This is the biggest challenge. If we accumulate the entire information at one go, I can underwrite my policy. I can give you a discount. I can do anything. Yes. This will benefit to the customer as well as the insurance company also. Now, the, this centralized database, as of now, is not available. Yes, uh, there are a lot of efforts going around on a digital Bharat mission. And um, there are uh, organizations where the traditional processes needs to be, uh, to be removed via AI. So we need to train our employee, we need to tell them the uh, benefits of an AI. And a lot more things is required to implement this. Thank you. Super. Thank you. Thank you, Mayfus. And uh, for Nimit, yeah, thank you for joining. Thank you. So, yeah, in the, in the context of health insurance, how does A contribute to customer experience and service delivery? So basically, uh, I'll, I'll just add to it, uh, I feel health score, like Sybil score will solve this. Uh, technically, at Ayushpe, we are doing exactly that, at sourcing AI is being used. Uh, AI is nothing, uh, AI is what we train them. So if you say, hey Siri, uh, call me a cab, and if AI starts calling you a cab in place of your name, then that's not AI. So AI has only, has a value only when you train it very well. You have data with it, otherwise it will call, start calling you from limit to a cab. So, uh, rather than actually calling a cab. So, 
from customer experience uh, perspective, uh, what I have seen is uh, there are a lot of uh, small asterisks, terms and condition given in an insurance policy. And a lot of time when consumer goes to a hospital for taking claim, the sal se paise de raha tha, ab aaj zarurat padi usko use karne ki. And now I'm walking into a hospital and I'm being rejected for a claim ki, sir, aapko is cheez ke liye mana kiya gaya. So because there are a lot of black and white which is, which is beyond your control. So I think one, obviously when I have a lot of insurance policies, if there is a tool where I can put my document and it can brief me 10 pointers ki you have these, these, these uh, terms and condition which is very crucial uh, for me to even make a claim or not. So th I think that is one. Obviously from uh, health insurance claim perspective, there are a lot of things. OCR is, is just an entry. I, I feel OCR is just an entry point. Uh, even today, uh, one insurance file is being approved by doctor and then there are a lot of departments, internal department inside an insurance company which is approving it. For my, for my example, my father, uh, it took almost eight hours for a discharge to happen. With a cashless hospital, with a pre-approval three days back, discharge took eight hours. The treatment took one hour, it was a cataract surgery. Uh, we were out of the OT at 12 p.m. We were able to get out of the hospital by 7, 7.30 p.m. So, and it was a cashless, no reimbursement, nothing. So I think a lot of uh, AI can also play uh, from... So NPS, consumer ka net promoter score girta hi claim karne ke work hai. Kyunki usse pehle to aap sir paise de rahe hoste ho. So I think waha pe AI can actually help and AI can build trust with consumer ki nahi insurance will cover you. I think that's an that's important piece there. Adding to you, your point, you're absolutely right. The biggest problem in the hospital is discharge. You go by cashless, cashless will come in 20 minutes, 30 minutes, everybody is telling us we are the best in giving you the cashless, we are giving you in 30 minutes, 20 minutes. The biggest problem which we are facing right now is the, is the discharge of the patient. As you said, on the proposal side, I just want to add, see, as of now, uh, as a customer, I'll go to the insurance company, said, I want a health insurance, okay. Uh, what are your pre-existing disease? I said, okay, I think doctor will elaborate better on <laughs> from me. So I said, I have a diabetes, okay, put down the diabetes. I have a, a blood pressure, I will note it down the blood pressure. Maybe there are two, three technical things which I don't know. And I've mentioned that. The moment the claim comes, they said, you have not mentioned that particular thing. That is why we are rejecting the claim. So the whole idea of the government of India and other uh, agencies, once the entire data set of the ecosystem of that particular customer health information is present in one particular ID, yes. just like Aadhaar or PAN or vehicle, Vahan, then this, this uh, information can be taken by the insurance company at the time of giving you the proposal. Once the proposal is approved, they cannot reject that. So here the AI will play a very important role, right. subjected to we have a centralized database. Otherwise not possible. Yeah, there is uh, another challenge about the uh, rates of certain surgeries. Yeah. Like take for example Lab Coley. Within the same city, two hospitals you know, with compatible infrastructure, one is approving 40,000, the other one is approving 60,000. Yeah. We face this problem pretty regularly. Yes. That was in hospital, you did this case, this is lesser, so there is some problem with you. I think artificial intelligence should be able to address yeah, exactly. it. Exactly. I think even the waiting time, not only, like as he said, uh, it's not about the waiting time, the stress levels, what the people will go, whether it will get approved or not. I think that's the biggest challenge generally the, the, the patients are facing. Yes, ma'am, you yeah, want to add I something? think uh, what we are looking at it, and I'll build up on what you said, Mr. Khan. Uh, you spoke about the U.S. vehicular policies and how we can predict uh, the behavior and accord behavior of the rider or the driver in this case. And we can actually uh, basically design po uh, the entire policy according to the behavior of that. Now, there is a thing, right? Uh, first of all, even in the U.S. today, just 27% of the U.S. population owns any vehicle whatsoever. First is that, and I mean, correct me, Mr. Uh, Garg, right? If I'm, uh, sorry, uh, if I'm wrong, but in today's scenario, if we look at the private insurance cover in the country, we have what, around 13% gross? We have retailed, uh, retailed 
retail is three to four percent and thirty four percent. Yeah, more. yeah, but that's government yeah. insurances, yeah. most of them, right? But yeah, gross three to five percent. Three to five percent only. So now the point is, we are talking about uh, now looking at it from another context. How many times do you need surgery in your life? Hopefully none, but at max, not more than two at an average, right? Um, now, the point is, we are not looking at healthcare as a whole, as a system, and I think you pointed out a little bit on that uh, point, that the reason why we are able to analyze the uh, behavior of a driver is because the car itself is equipped to do that, not because the insurer is equipped to do that. Now, the point is that healthcare system is not just about hospitals. We interact with healthcare in so many different areas. I mean, even you talking to your, uh, you know, elders about healthcare advisors, essentially you're interacting with healthcare. Of course, we cannot capture all of it, but we need to capture a lot of it from the source itself, right? And that is where I think if we broaden the scope of uh, data gathering and what the government is also trying to do with ABDM right now is trying to expand the scope so that when we are building this uh, singular healthcare profile, uh, health sibyl as you co call it, or uh, the ABDM uh, address is the same. So the uh, Ashman Bharat Health address is exactly the same thing that we are basically creating a one single EMR, but that running EMR has to be from all the multiple all sources. The and that is where I think AI has one of the, one of the largest applications. Uh, more, I mean, more ML than AI, of course. But uh, in that case, we are gathering the data from multiple sources. They have different uh, formats. They have different structures. They have different sources and different references, taking them up creating a single uh, format and then using most of your models for underwriting would create a much larger adoption in the field. So of course it's growing, but it's still pretty tiny as compared to the entire ecosystem that we are dealing with, right? So I mean, those are my two cents on it. Yeah, well, I, I think uh, the biggest, biggest source is the prescription of the doctor, which is still non-digital. Yes. So getting that into the system. And not just that, I'll tell you, so th uh, when I, uh, we were working on the Watson program, right, and this is uh, the first, the second iteration of the first Watson program, uh, even in the prescription, you don't really capture clinical decision. You just capture point A and point B, not how you got from point A to point B. So even the, and the iterations are so many that even if you capture almost all uh, prescriptions across the country, you will still not be able to make all the variations correct, right? So the actual data parity is huge when yeah. we are looking at it. And that is where, again, as you it's mentioned, that it's about how we train the AI that matters. Yes. But for that, we need the right clinical data. I feel, uh, like, like you rightly pointed it, prescription is one piece. If it gets connected with your diagnostics, I think yeah. that can give more data. Exactly. Because imagining that Google fit Apple uh, and everybody will come together and create a single repository. That's not AI, that's us. We have to get there and uh, make sure this data converges to a one platform. I feel that's still a bit early, uh, but yeah, uh, like car, obviously our body cannot be fitted with thousands of sensors and uh, that data goes to you. I feel uh, if an insurance company, look, what we at Ayushpay is doing that, we are focusing on more preventive and primary care. Because when you do that, you get a lot of, uh, like you said at sourcing, insurance company get data when a consumer takes a claim. Then sare data uske paas aajate, ICP and everything comes there. But at the time of sourcing, insurance company does not know Nimeth, does not know anybody. And uh, I feel when you focus on preventive and primary care, that's, uh, you cover that. That's OPDs like became very big post COVID. That's where uh, the actual, not exact what Dr. Sabine is saying. I don't think even that at that level, but a lot of things will start coming into the picture key, what consumer or what that con patient is going through in today's day and age, rather than a single snapshot. Yeah, absolutely, I fully agree with Dr. Sabine. I think ki, uh, as she said, ki all factor needs to be considered bring it to at one place and then access given to the insurance company, then we can underwrite at the time of sourcing. So on that line… And that detail should be. This is what you are trying yeah, to do. Yeah, and not just that, 
but I think it's also about, I mean, as you said quite rightly, we are at 3% in market cap. We're talking about the scale in numbers, right? right? Underwriting works better always when the risk is hedged at a larger degree. So one of the bigger problems that we have right now in the global south, across the global south, almost all countries, say, apart from South Korea and a couple of others, and Philippines perhaps, they have a good one there. But apart from those two, we pretty much have a cost problem. The cost is not affordable and is not conducive for most of the people. And I mean, according to the recent data, if I'm not mistaken, the middle income group starts at the, you know, monthly income, family monthly income of 10,000 rupees. I mean, <laughs> that is where the middle income group starts. So everyone below that, which is more than 45% of the population is below that target. I mean, that, that's a dinner at Taj, I believe. So, and that took probably just for one. Uh, but the point is that, so the cost is a problem. And if we are looking at preventive, then cost is a much, much bigger problem because we don't really have the therapeutics necessary and the scale to underwrite it at that level. So, of course, I mean, I'm one of the largest believers you can find for, uh, you know, uh, preventive health insurance systems or rather, as we call it, managed care insurance, VBIS. Uh, value-based insurance systems. But uh, for that to kick in, we need the scales that India as a country can provide. And I think that is where most of the, uh, you know, effects of ABDM and other such programs is going to come into picture, bringing in that massive numbers of data that can underwrite and risk hedge at a much larger level. Yeah. So, on that line, Dr. Parmaji, like I think uh, all of them have been quoting about the lot of involvement of government in this, uh, the whole thing. So, how do you think from a policy making or from the collaboration between government, insurers, healthcare providers, all of them can happen, so which can really key, resolve this? One of the key parameters of, uh, you know, uh, Ayushman Bharat uh, will be uh, to get this entire data in one place yes. and uh, make it interoperable. So there is a lot of accent on interoperability, which means essentially that this clinical data is accessible across the health systems, like hospitals can access. I mean, provided those people are authorized. So there will be level layers in which the people will be authorized who can access the patient data. There will be a repository where all your data, the same way as your Aadhaar card details are available, yeah. will be available. The doctors, the care providers who are authorized, sir. the insurance companies, the pathological laboratories, diagnostic chains, they can access your data and, uh, you know, uh, can help uh, get the, uh, uh, you know, patient get the right treatment. How, how quick, quick we can expect this to happen? So, uh, uh, obviously, there will be a repository where all this data will be available. Next five years. The private players will be asked to integrate with ABA. It's, it's a humongous exercise. Yeah. See, even now, they have not been able to integrate the government hospitals, you know, a large number of them across the country, right? They have to first get them on board. There are more than 25,000 hospitals, private uh, providers who are already, uh, you know, onboarded for providing Ayushman uh, cover. Uh, there are more than 70,000 hospitals span India, private uh, hospitals. They all have to be brought on the same platform. Currently, just about 10,000 hospitals, I think, most of the insurance companies have access to yeah. who, uh, yeah, who are maximum. servicing That's the maximum. insured patient. Just about 10,000. There are just 1,500 NABH accredited hospitals. And as per IRDA rules, you typically partner with a uh, entry-level NABH or NABH accredited hospital. So 1,500 NABH hospitals. 40 uh, JCI hospitals is what you have and then the rest are uh, entry level which means you just about meet the basic quality requirement for healthcare delivery and you want to provide the best quality. Yes. So first step is to get these 70,000 hospitals on the same platform then have the data of every patient uh, through ABHA being uh, you know uh, stored in one place and creating those layers for accessibility of the patient information to bring the right uh, you know, line of treatment and also, you know, you can work out thank those, you, thank uh, you so much, sir. Uh, insurance products for everyone. Yeah. Sir, so, that will be the last thing they are yeah. pushing me. Just a minute. <laughs> I think we One information I want to pass. Adding yeah, to, please. sir, ABI, we have started just now, right? 
Our buy is as good as a civil score. If I'm going to take a loan from the bank, they check my civil score, right? With the ABA, integration with the insurance companies, will they get a health score. The better the health score, the lesser the premium. The higher the health score, the higher the premium, right? Second thing is, uh, we were talking about the AI, right? How AI is going to help? Few insurance companies has already incorporated AI in the claim processing. And one of them is ICC Lombard. They approve the claim within seconds, not hours or minutes, within seconds. The data flows for approval to their system. If they feel it is good, same time approved. There are some flags, flags like number of admissions for that particular person in that same year, how much someone should be left for him, what is the policy number, what he has quoted in the form, is it matching, they'll give. In case of any flag, it will be sent to a minimal intervention. And very important, India, we have 64 doctors against population of one lakh, right ma'am? Against the global, 150 doctors against one lakh population. So insurance company, if they hire the doctors for claim processing, who will take care of patients? So AI is very important for claim processing, for writing policies, for detecting the frauds in the insurance fraternity. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you so much for all of you. I think it has been a wonderful panel. You made my life easy. The conversation was flowing, <laughs> I think, between you people. <laughs> yeah, it was so interesting. I'm sure the, even for the audience it was interesting. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so very much to all the intellectuals for the informative discussion over here. So now I would like to call Mr. Avzil Kamal sir and Manish Rastogi sir to please uh, give all of them a token of appreciation. So firstly, I would like to invite here Mr. Suman Mukuri sir, who was the moderator of this discussion here. So he's a CEO of STS Wealth. Please give him a huge round of applause. Next, I would like to welcome uh, Mr. Colonel Himraj Singh, sir. Please put your hands together for him. Next, I would like to call uh, Dr. Sabine Kapasi. Please ca receive this token of appreciation. She is an advisor in United States Emergency Response, global healthcare expert in tech and FinTech and Healthcare Tech. Thank you so very much. So next I would like to call here Dr. Abhitab Gupta. Please receive this a small token of appreciation. He's a Chief Business Executive, Ace Insurance Brokers Private Limited. Thank you so very much. Next I would like to call here Paramveer Singh Gill. Please receive this small token of appreciation. And he's an AVP of Claims Prudent Insurance Broker. Please put your hands together for him. Come on, everyone. Next, I would like to call here Mr. Nimit Agarwal. He's a CEO and co-founder of Ayush Play. Please put your hands together for him. So uh, last but not the least, we have Mehfooz Ali Khan. Please come up here and receive this small token of appreciation. He's the head of operation PBP Partners Policy Bazaar. Please put your hands together for him. Come on, everyone. All right, so can we have a group photo of all the dignitaries on the stage? Thank you so very much.